Hello friends, today I'm going to talk about Google BERT. I'll try to explain various components of BERT along with some code implementation as well so that you can get familiar with whatever is happening here. One disclaimer I want to make, I'm not from Google. I'm just trying to explain what Google BERT architecture is based on what knowledge I've gathered from various sources on internet. For people who do not know what I'm talking about means what is BERT, let me give you a quick overview. Natural Language Processing or NLP has been focus area for many research organizations which include Google, Microsoft and many universities. Google research team has de developed BERT machine learning model which have proved to be the best of the model which are available into the market and Google open source it as well. To prove this, BERT was trained and tested on Stanford release data, Stanford University release data, which is, which is also called SQUAD, where it proved itself to the best scorer among various competitors. Various NLP area where BERT can be applicable are shown into the next slide. You can see here, these are 11 tasks which, on which the, uh, Google is working, but it can be implemented on various other areas. For example, it can also be implemented in time series analysis too. Okay, so now you have got to get basics what Google BERT is. Let me try to show you what I'm going to show you in the in this video series. I'll I'll show you what BERT is, then I'll show you the sequence to sequence encoder decoder overview, then what attention is and how attention is implemented. Then what is the dot product attention and uh, how it is uh, headed implemented into the code along with multi multi headed attention. Then the transformer architecture that I'm going to explain and the code snippets that has been implemented by the hugging face or the Google. And I'll try to tell you some more thing about it. I hope you will enjoy it. Basically what I'm trying to explain you here is the various components of BERT so that you can understand what is the complexity there need and you can spend less time in implementing and understanding this beast. As of now I'm talking about mainly the architecture if you like I can make more videos you can tell me later uh, how to implement BERT into these NLP areas so let's start BERT but stands for bi-directional encoder representation from transformers <laughs> uh, don't get scared I uh, will explain these terms one by one so first uh, first term is bi-directional bi-directional means because this model reads text from the both directions. suppose you are seeing the text whatever is written onto your screen it reads from left bi-directional because this one and also it read at the same time it is reading from here as well text understanding of the text a mark that isn't read so if it is reading in both direction it gets better sense of the text and can make better decision and get better understand this text then the encoder uh, encoder decoder architecture has is being used for quite some time into the industry in machine AI industry where uh, the task to be done is fed from to the encoder and the result is uh, achieved uh, received from the output end of the decoder this is also called sequence to sequence i'll give you an overview into the next slide next is the representation this encoder dec decoder architecture is represented using transformers Based, traditionally it has been represented using rnns in in case of BERT, it is represented using transformers now what is the transformer and transformer is uh, a transform is a combination of attention one term normalization another term and mass attention so these three things make a transformer and the attention that is used in transformer is multi head attention don't get sleepy i'll try to give you overview of all these terms but basically first you understand what the name is bi-directional you understood what by how it is why it is called bi-directional then encoder decoder architecture then these transformers represented using uh, this is represented using the transformers the bi-directional encoder representation from transformer so this is the name so let's talk about the first term that came into the name sequence to sequence to understand architecture let us pick an nlp use case say for example the translation machine translation translation from french to english english to french machine translation at its core simply a task where you map a sentence to another sentence for example english how are you to some some something in german uh, sentences are made of words so this is equivalent to mapping a sequence of uh, words to another sequence of words people have developed many methods in the in the past few years for performing such mapping uh, these methods are called sequence to sequence methods one sequence map to the another sequence generally sequence to sequence tasks are performed using an encoder decoder model the basic idea behind this encoder decoder that you are seeing here is uh, that encoder takes a sequence of input here see this 
this it is taking german tongue and and converts it to some intermediate representations somewhere inside this and passes this representation whatever the encoded mathematical numbers are generated internally by encoder to the decoder one and this decoder converts this german into a text for example knowledge is power i have taken this snippet uh, from uh, this site where you can go there and understand more about sequence to encoder decoder now to implement the sequence to sequence encoder decoder into google part the middle layer where attention is there it is replaced with a multi headed attention and traditionally these encoder decoders are rnns so these are replaced with the multi headed attention blocks before the transformer rnns which are called recurrent neural networks were the most widely used and successful architecture for both encoder and decoder but uh, there is some there are some limitations with rnn they are good for short sentences when the sentence become large very large for example suppose you have a paragraph then they have to put all this sentence into a single vector called sentence vector if the sentence is large putting all that information into a, a single vector becomes becomes problematic why they have to put everything into a single vector so that it can see all the information and uh, take a better decision based on the context that is getting generated in the left or right or whatever second thing rnns are sequential in nature first input is first text word first word is going then second word is being read then third word is being read so every context is made based on the what is coming previously they are sequential which is not good when we are going to deploy gpu kind of mechanism which are uh, which which give you very good speed uh, and which are optimized for parallel processing so rnn suffers this limitation and therefore these had to be improved keep the video short and crisp i'm splitting this video series into three parts uh, let us meet into the second part where i'm going to talk about the attention types and the actual bird architecture see you there